All right, let's give this a go. My name is Gareth. You're watching the Hub Online Network. We're getting pretty close to Christmas, so let's get to it. Yeah, so it's been a fun couple of uh, days or shows for us here. Last week we did a couple of game shows. We did Trade Up, which was a lot of fun. We did Wheel of Fortune, which everybody keeps walking away with lots of prizes from us. Tomorrow night we have another game show uh, starting at 6 o'clock, uh, which is Trivia Night. So if you want to check that out and see what it's all about, give us, uh, give us a view. Um, we are unfortunately in competition. Not Now, I feel pretty bad. Um, the Sage Sound Singers, which I'll get to in a minute, set up a night well in advance. We didn't think to look, and we set up a night as well. Um, so realistically, we want people to be watching the Sage Sound Singers. Um, but if concerts aren't your thing, give us a look over. Um, I'm looking forward to what the Sage Sound Singers have to put on, so I want to be watching that uh, as well as doing the trivia thing. Um, but uh, speak... But I'll, I'll get to what the Sage Sound Singers have to say in a bit. We aren't going to be doing a show on Friday because Friday is Christmas. Uh, but next week we're going to be doing our normal show on Tuesday again, just like this one. And then we're going to have a, an interview with Barbara Roden's going to come into the studio on Wednesday. We're going to talk about the top things happening or that happened in 2020. So I'm just going to fix an audio thing here. Um, we're going to talk about the top things that happened in 2020, and then, yeah, so that's going to be happening Wednesday, oh, now I've done it, uh, and stay. Uh, Friday, we're going to not do a live show, but we're going to pre-record sort of half an hour to put on at 11.30, uh, so you can spend some time with us, if you were so inclined, at 11.30 at night on New Year's Eve, even though it's not going to be us live, but we will still have a countdown and all that stuff, so check that out if you are interested. Now, okay, so, uh, there actually is some pretty... Different news going on in Ashcroft and Cache Creek this week. So item 7.8 on the January 5th regular meeting agenda for the School District 74 is property disposal process. A former Ashcro of former Ashcroft Elementary School. Background information notes that the board of the School District 74 has over the last several years reviewed surplus properties that are no longer required for the educational purposes and disposal of properties to allow funding and staffing to be focused on schools that are open. Since 2013, nine properties have been disposed of. SD, or School District 74 Secretary Treasurer Linda Minabariot says that every year the board goes through a process of looking at properties that are no longer being used for school purposes. Now, Vicki Trill uh, so far has said that no decisions have been made yet. Um, for, for people that may not know, the building that they're talking about is the place where the hub is located. This is an old elementary school. Uh, about five, so this a few years ago, the school district went to a K-12 school based out of the old high school. And now the hub is based out of the old elementary school. Uh, we are we are based out of the hub here at the Hub Online Network, and so this is a fairly interesting story for us. So Vicky Trill, who is the current uh, executive director of the hub, uh, says that no decisions have been made yet. The hub board has asked the school board to uh, postpone the decision until we are living in more certain times. If the disposal dis discussion moves forward, the school board will be looking for public feedback. The entire process will take time, and the hub board will continue to provide services to the community and will be discussing the options available for continuing uh, for, long, for a long time into the future. And we will keep the community updated as this progresses. So uh, follow us here at the Hub Online Network. Check out the Ashcroft Cash Creek Journal. Uh, Barbara will be following this story fairly closely. And um, please let us know what your thoughts are, either in the comments or email us at honjournalist at ashcrofthub.com. 
Uh, now, one of the things that we've been doing here is a thing called little, it's called random act of, ra acts of kindness. So if you will try to watch our Friday show, uh, you might have noticed that it was sort of hard to hear. We were running around, we were doing all sorts of stuff, but you might not have known what we were doing. So what we were doing was we had presents, or little, little gift bags that were about, I don't know, 10 to $15 per little gift bag. And it had some gift certificates to places in town, a pair of socks, chocolates, stuff like that. And we were just handing out little acts of kindness. So that's what we were doing if you had watched Friday's show but didn't quite know what we were doing. Um, at the end of it, we did purchase somebody's groceries at Safety Mart, which was a lot of fun for us because it makes us feel good doing good things in town. Um, and as far as I can see, even though it was hard to hear us, it was well received. So thank you everybody in town that A, was able to get a gift and B, uh, thought it was cool that we were doing that so thank you all very much uh, actually here is a little taste of what some little random acts of kindness might look like i'm recording you Yeah, so that was our random acts of kindness, which was uh, still a lot of fun to do. Um, we, hang on, so what, what you guys can do at home is, you can email us at honmanager at ashcrofthub.com, and what we'll do, uh, tell us, A, who you would like to nominate for a random act of kindness, why you would like to nominate them, and what you would like for us to give for them. We uh, can do... A fairly significant thing so please let us know what we can do to help support our community and treat people right this year uh, so yeah h-o-n manager at, at ashcrofthub.com for random acts of kindness um now for sage sound singers the COVID 19 pen this is what uh this is from their specific ad for their concert which again, I hope everybody checks this out. So they say that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected all of us in profound ways. At Sage Sound Singers, it had caused the cancellation of our Spring 2020 concert and the upcoming BCCF Core Fest 2021, which was, sorry, Choir Fest 2021, which was to be hosted by us and held right here in Ashcroft. COVID almost caused the cancellation of our Christmas 2020 concert. Thanks to fast thinking and quick action, it did not prevail. We are pre presenting our Christmas concert for the first time as a pre-recorded video concert on YouTube. This will be a free concert for all. It is our gift to you, our wonderful loyal supporters. We have named our concert Just Believe. We will be singing new interpretations of Christmas music. We have sung in the past, plus a few new ones. To watch the concert, you will need to complete a free registration form. Uh, so from Get Tickets tab... Uh, select one ticket, click on Add to Cart. Next, click on Click Out 
checkout now. Under attendee details, enter your first name and last name, enter your email address and phone number. It is very important that, that you enter a valid email address since a few days before the premiere, which is now tomorrow night, we will send you a link to the concert using this address. This email address is our only way of communicating and any unforeseen changes to the concert. Next, agree to the terms, click on the complete order, um, and then they will send you a link in your email. Please register at uh, please register a ticket for each person in each viewing location. An email with a link to the concert will be sent uh, to, the, in, to that email address. You enter at checkout and you can all watch together. So that's pretty awesome. It was very easy to set up and figure out. I did it myself and I'm not usually the most online tech savvy person. So uh, if you can, support the Sage Sound Singers. Again, it's a free concert. They put a lot of work into this, so let's uh, support them. Uh, so from Cache Creek, just to inform the bus passengers that there is no bus to 100 Mile House next Monday and no bus Friday the 1st. Um, this is what they say from Cash Creek. I've had to take leave of absence due to deteriorating health. I hope to be back soon. Meanwhile, my replacement driver is as good as I am. His name is Todd, and he can be contacted at 603-276-9011, or you can still contact me, and I'll pass the message on. Uh, oh, this is okay. Yeah, I encourage everyone to support the road reports I've been doing. If you run across uh, if you run across bad conditions or holdups, just report it through the website, like I've been, been didn't, like I have been. Merry Christmas and pray for a better New Year, Lawrence. Uh, so that is pretty awesome. Thank you, Lawrence, for everything that you have been doing. Uh, I know that that bus is a lifesaver for a lot of people in town. So we hope for you to have a speedy recovery. And Todd, we wish you all the best doing what you do, taking over for Lawrence. Now, um, this is interesting. So on December 19th at 11.55 p.m., th this, I'm going to show you a little video here. Uh, this 2,850-pound jade... Oh, you don't you can't, you can't see this the jade boulder in front of the jade shop has been stolen. This truck that just drove past the camera right now is the truck and uh, bulldozer that picked it up. Um, so if you see this truck or this uh, backhoe, please be sure to call the RCMP. Um, there I am. Uh, but it was stolen from the jade shop in Cash Creek, last seen in an older late 1990s gray gold and black Dodge extended gig cab that is diesel with a long box pickup. Pulling a flat deck trailer with an orange Kabuda excavator with a small bucket. Vehicle went Kelowna, went towards Kamloops. Please call the RCMP immediately with any information. Um, it's always a shame when something like this happens, so please let's get that jade rock. Uh, Bolt block boulder, whatever you want to call it. Let's get it back here for our people at the Jade Shop. From the Equality Project in Cash Creek, they say we wish to let everybody who is alone on Christmas or in need physically or emotionally to please come for Christmas turkey dinner at the Equality Project at 1260 Stage Road in Cash Creek between 11 and 1. Uh, we will ask people to eat and not stay more than half an hour so that everyone can have an opportunity to have a great fresh turkey dinner on Christmas Day, December 25th. Maybe by next year we'll be able to let people stay longer and enjoy the afternoon. And that's really nice. i got to hand it to the Equality Project. Thank you guys very much for opening up your doors to doing this. Um, I know that there are a lot of people out there that can use this help, and I'm sure that they appreciate it. Uh, so, do I have anything else in town? Yeah, so we actually posted a video about Christmas lights. So I drove around town. Uh, we took a bunch of video of Christmas light setups on um, people's houses. Um, so here's just a little taste of what the video is. The video isn't much longer than this, but please check it out. We It's posted on our now our YouTube and Facebook page, but here's a bit of it.
Yeah, so that was a lot of fun to film, a lot of fun to make. So um, please check it out and let us know what you think. And hopefully ne and let us know what we can do better for next year um, to have as a video for Christmas lights. I kind of think it would be cool to be like stationary across the street for a good 10 seconds per house. Um, maybe we can set something up like that. So from the province, we're going to start talking about COVID stuff now. So remember that right now, social gatherings and events are not allowed. At least until January 8th, you can only socialize and gather in person with your immediate household or core bubble. Allow, apply, oh, so this is great. So you can apply now for the BC Recovery Benefit, a one-time tax-free payment of up to $1,000 for eligible families and single parents, and up to $500 for eligible individuals. You have until June 30th, 2021 to apply. Uh, so that's something I finally applied for, just to, I try to do things to see how difficult it is for you guys. Um, it was fairly easy, but you do need to have your driver's license, uh, your tax information from last year, and you know current address and your um, banking information if you want a direct deposit so make sure you have all those things uh, you can go check that out it is on the bc government website it's not necessarily the easiest thing to find on their website it's not front and center uh, but um, if i can do it you can do it so go check that out uh, now brad viss has some final thoughts uh, from just to get us through to 2020 uh, so let's see what Brad Viss has to say. 2020 has been difficult. I want to acknowledge the uncertainty and the pain, both physical and financial, that so many of you have shared with me. Unfortunately, Canada's challenges have increased because of federal government mismanagement. From the start of the COVID-19 crisis, the Conservative Party has worked to collaborate with the government for the good of Canadians and we continue in our genuine efforts to strike a Team Canada approach. Sadly, time and time again, the Liberal government has put their interests and that of their friends ahead of the needs of regular Canadians. The first thing they did in response to this crisis was to attempt to shutter Parliament for two years and to grant themselves unprecedented powers to tax Canadians and spend their money unchecked. They prorogued Parliament to shut down inquiries into the WE Charity scandal. They put Canada's vaccine eggs in one basket, partnering with CanSino, a firm tied to the Chinese military, to produce a COVID-19 vaccine, then were somehow shocked when Beijing killed the project. They have since scrambled to order vaccines from around the world, leaving Canadians uncertain when life will return to normal. But what most concerns me are the long-term impacts that the decisions of today will have on our children and grandchildren because they will be paying for them for decades. For the first time in Canadian history, the government failed to table a national budget. Their fall economic statement from November 30th promises a jaw-dropping $400 billion deficit. Every public institution monitoring expenditures is raising red flags. Alarmingly, the parliamentary budget officer says and I quote, there is no clear path forward for the government's finances. And the former PBO says that the fall economic statement is impossible to read. And while he has done this type of work for years, even he can't follow the money. As Her Majesty's loyal opposition, Conservatives will continue to fight for Canadians as we enter a new year. In 2021, I will redouble my efforts to hold this government to account, to demand the transparency the Liberals promised and Canadians deserve and to showcase the Conservatives are the government in waiting that Canada needs to get back to get our citizens back to university, back to work, and back to normal. And that was our Member of Parliament, Brad Viss, giving us his end of the year uh, spiel. Um, pretty intense, some of that, but hey, it's 2020. Uh, if you can't be intense, what else can you be, I suppose? Stay up, oh, you Christmas trees. There we go. Okay, so now COVID-19 update. So over the weekend, there was 1,667 new cases. Uh, so that brings our total to 47,067 cases in BC. So from the 18th to 19th, we had 652. Uh, from the 19th to 20th, 486. And 529 from the 20th to 21st. Uh, there have been 41 deaths over the weekend, which brings our death total up to 765. Small, small and medium-sized businesses need our support now more than ever. That's why we've made it easier for BC businesses to qualify for the Business Recovery Grant Program. 
Um, so the eligible businesses can receive up to $30,000, while those in the tourism sector specifically can receive up to $45,000. Um, so if you if that affects you, um, make sure that you apply for that and make sure that you can keep your business going during these ever increasingly difficult times. However, those numbers looks makes it seem like we're flattening that curve again. We're coming down from the 700, 800 cases a day mark um, in places like Alberta and Ontario and Quebec. Their numbers are skyrocketing again, uh, making some making them make decisions when, when, as to whether they're going to do more lockdowns and strict, stricter lockdowns again. And so um, we hope that they can flatten their curves as well. Now, as for vaccines. Okay, so today took another hopeful and important step uh, forward in our fight against COVID-19. Dr. Bonnie Henry, a provincial health officer, joined hundreds of other health care workers in getting their first dose of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. More and more vaccines will continue arriving in B.C. each week as we roll out B.C.'s safe immunization. Immunization? plan. The COVID-19 vaccine has that has been approved by Health Canada is safe, effective, and will save lives. Vaccines do more than protect the people getting vaccinated. They also protect everyone around them too. The more people in the community who are vaccinated and protected from COVID-19, the harder it is for the virus to spread. The first vaccines arriving in BC are from Pfizer. We expect vaccines from Moderna to be available soon. The COVID-19 vaccine will be free for everybody in British Columbia who is eligible to receive it. Both the Pfizer and Mondera vaccines require two doses spaced out at at least three weeks apart. After receiving the COVID-19 uh, COVID vaccine, some people have reported side effects similar to those experienced after a flu shot. Some people experience short-term side effects after receiving a COVID-19 vaccine, while others do not. Side effects reported by some people uh, after receiving the COVID-19 vaccine include mild to moderate fatigue, pain and in some cases chills, head or joint pain. These are all normal vaccine side effects and are often the same side effects of the flu shot. As with all vaccines, there's a chance that there will be some serious side effects, but these are very rare. A serious side effects might be something like an allergic reaction. Canada has had one of the most thorough systems to approve new vaccines uh, for use in people. Only vaccines that Health Canada determines to be safe and effective are approved for use in Canada. Creating a new vaccine can take years. Approval of COVID-19 vaccines is happening faster because Health Canada shortened the administrative and organizational process. Factors that allowed COVID-19 vaccines to progress quickly include advances in science and technology, international collaboration among scientists, health professionals, researchers, industry, and governments, and increased dedicated funding. So um, if you... Let us know what you think about the vaccine. Uh, again, email me at honjournalist at ashtrofthub.com. Um, and I would, I would very much like to know what people have to say about this. Please. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on from vaccines. From Jackie Taggart. So uh, what I'm going to read now is just an excerpt from an article that Jackie wrote for CFJC. Um, now this, uh, Jackie is our local member of the Legislative Assembly. So Jackie says, as we approach the end of what has been a very difficult year, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on the unbelievable work uh, our parents, teachers, support staff, and administrators have done to keep our children safe in our schools during the COVID-19 pandemic. The school year is busy and it is busy and it is and has become even more so as everyone adds various protective measures to their daily routine a big thank you to everyone who is bleeding who is heeding the advice of health officials and taking the precautions necessary to protect themselves and others but with bc uh, in the midst of the second wave of the virus, at a time when we are seeing record numbers of cases, parents and teachers are raising some very real concerns that the current provincial government needs to address. Firstly, teachers and support staff are calling for greater consultation 
and for government to listen to their concerns and recommendations so that they can carry on their vital work without risking their own health and well-being. Teachers across BC expressed their dismay when they weren't consulted in the NDP government's decision not to extend the winter break, which would have given uh, them some time to catch their breath and reevaluate their plans while students isolate at home. We wish all of you a very... Oh, so now this is back to me. So that's something that Jackie Taggart uh, is saying. If you want to read the rest of that article, because it goes on for a bit, um, you can go onto the CFJC web or Facebook page and you can find that uh, article, or you can go into Jackie Taggart's Facebook page and find that article as well. Uh, now, do I have anything else here? I think I do. The government also says that shopping at small businesses in BC is more important than ever this holiday season. Choosing to so shop local means more money stays in your community and supports a local entrepreneur. Over 1,500 BC businesses are waiting, are waiting to help you with your wish list. Now, you can check out that list of local businesses on the Government of Canada or BC's Facebook page. Now, I also have a, ah, here we go. So, in the village of Ashcroft, just so everybody is up to date, I talked about this on Friday's show, but again, it was very hard to hear me. So, the village office will be closed from Thursday, December 24th, 2020, until 8 a.m. Monday, January 4th. Garbage collection. So, garbage pickup on Garbage pickup for Friday, December 25th and January 1st, 2021 will be picked up on Thursday, December 24th and Thursday, December 20th, uh, 31st. So please have your garbage out by 7 a.m. Um, so that is really the two big things other than, of course, in the in new year, they're going to be changing their um, council meeting sessions to 6 p.m. opposed to 4.30 or 7 uh, because it's going to go Cash Creek one week, Ashcroft the next. So every week, everybody's going to be just be at 6 p.m. So keep that in mind moving forward for next year. But of course, we'll be covering it all. And we're going to be going live at least in Ashcroft. I'm not sure what Cash Creek and us are going to do yet. Um, but we're going to be going live for sure in Ashcroft. So all of that being said, as I wrap this up, um, again, we aren't going to have a show on Friday, so we would like to wish you all happy Bode Day, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Festivus, and Christmas. We will not be doing a show on Friday, but please share with us some of your 2020 memories as next week we'll be talking about some ups and downs of 2020. So again, send in your sort of top 10 lists or just a couple of things that you thought were awesome or bad or challenging or whatever for 2020 and we will um, make a bunch of different top 10 lists uh, for next week and again thank you all very much today i'm not going to pick somebody specific to say good night to so i'm just going to say to everybody merry christmas in ashcroft and cash creek and the surrounding area if you're watching have yourself a safe fantastic time and we'll see you all next week on tuesday thank you all for watching and again have a nice day